to start off, I want to talk about the different different situations where that you would need the different types of communications. Um, like I said, it's not all just about two-way radios. Uh, there's different situations where you're going to need different types of communications. You're going to want different types of information. So there's the beginning, like something just happened. Those the initial stages of any sort of you know small scale power outage, car accident, um, up to the large scale you know EMP type stuff and all of that. Then you've got right in the middle of it, which is mainly that's like the most dangerous time on just about any disaster. Even if you're talking about a car accident, right after that happens. You know, get, are you on the road, are you off the road, are other people injured, all of that stuff. So that's, in that type of situation, what you communicate, who you communicate with is going to be different than maybe that beginning stage where it's you're just about what's going on. You're, you're collecting that information. Uh, the third stage, and I stole that picture from The Walking Dead, and even though it's The Walking Dead, even though it's zombies and stuff, they still do a, as far as Hollywood goes, they do a fairly decent job of trying to explain what the whole rebuilding thing uh, would be like, and, and I say that with the caveat of Hollywood. Uh, so the communications in that type of situation is going to be a whole lot different too than in, in the middle of something when you're, you're basically in survival mode. At this point, you know, everything is kind of calmed down a little bit, so you think. Uh, so communications are going to be different. So, oops, wrong way. So in the beginning stages, the poop just hit the fan. Um, in this type of situation, in any sort of disaster situation, small scale, large scale, whatever it is, that timing is going to be critical. If you're at work and, say, the power goes out, the, you're going to be trying to gather as much information as possible, almost like when you, when you brainstorm and just, you just write everything down that pops into your head. In a situation like this, you're trying to get all the information you can. You know, is it a power outage? Is it an EMP? Uh, with... With us knowing a little bit more about EMPs than the average person in your office building, we're probably going to know, hey, the phone, my phone shut off. It's not working. Uh, you look outside, there's some cars, you know, maybe a couple cars that just aren't working uh, or they're just sitting there in the middle of the road. So you're going to, okay, this is, you're going to know that this is a little bit more than just a power outage. And you're going to know, I better get out of here now before people start to figure this stuff out. Uh, you want to get out before, and this kind of goes for bugging out and stuff like that as well. You want to get out before everybody else figures it out, before those, those roads get clogged, uh, even the back roads. You know, we all know not to take highways and stuff, but a lot of people are going to be taking those back roads too, and those will get clogged real easy, uh, if, especially if it's just one lane. So in this type of situation, um, it's that intelligence gathering. Like I said, you're just trying to figure out what's going on, uh, and I'll go a little bit deeper into intelligence gathering here in a sec, but what do I have next? Okay, intelligence gathering. Uh, this one... This one I could probably do a whole class, or somebody could probably do a whole class just on this. Um, but I'm going to go through um, some of the basics and try to keep it at a, a general level. Uh, Samuel Culper, if anybody's really interested in um, intelligence gathering, that's all Samuel Culper does. Uh, he runs the Forward Observer podcast and website. And he, I mean, he gets into the weeds with this stuff. He was in the military, did that stuff, and he, uh, he definitely knows what he's talking about with this stuff. So, uh, to you've, What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I read, yeah, I read one of his, and I remember thinking, "Wow, this guy, way better than me." <laughs> yeah, you, you. What my problem with him was when I first started listening to him, it was just over my head. But if you listen to five or ten of them, all of that stuff starts to click. Yeah, and it makes sense. But yeah, he, he, he's really good at this stuff. Uh, but anyway, the first part is the collection. And this is kind of figuring out what the job is. And we'll go the the EMP thing. You're trying to figure out the information about, is this just a regular power outage? Is this something bigger that I should be concerned about? So you're just trying to figure out, it's, it's that brainstorming like I was talking about. Getting all the information you possibly can, um, and then you'll filter that as we go through this process. You'll filter that information down uh, to kind of get the important stuff out of there. Uh, in the processing part, this is where it's kind of like putting a puzzle together, uh, where you kind of lay all the pieces out on the puzzle. The first stage is, you know, turning all the pieces up so they're face up so you can see them all, uh, and then maybe putting the pictures of clouds with the other pictures of clouds, and, you know. And then in this stage, you're, you're starting to dig a little bit deeper. So maybe you've got a neighbor, and I'm going to mention this, and anybody who's listening to my podcast is going to know who I'm talking about. But maybe you've got this neighbor, he's just a cranky old man, 
likes to get in everybody's business all the time and you know you're walking home where it's some large scale situation you're walking home and he's like oh there's a bunch of people over in the next neighborhood just raising hell uh tearing things up so you know this guy is not the most credible source of information does anybody know who i'm talking about mr johnson yeah yeah um and it, just for example reason it's not like this has actually happened but um but you know he's not that credible a source of information. So on your way home, you talk to a neighbor that um, you get, you've known forever, you get along with well with, you trust him, and you say, hey, did you hear about this group of people that's over in the next neighborhood? And he says, yeah, I heard that, you know, I heard there's a bunch of people or like seven or eight people, uh, you know, just goofing around. I think they've gotten into one or two houses, but, uh, you know, they're not tearing the neighborhood up or anything. I think he's exaggerating. Then maybe on your, you know, you talk to one more person, try to validate that again, and he, that person knows a little bit more information. He says, yeah, it's, it's seven people. So you're like, okay, that's, that was correct information. And you start asking those probing questions and trying to dig deeper and to get that correct information about, you know, do you know maybe what their ages are? Are they older or younger? He says they're about 20. And that right there tells you, you know, the younger people are a little more gung-ho about things and than us older people. Maybe I'm just an old coot, but... Um, we tend to be a little more rational about things than the younger ones. Um, so that gives you some important information right there. And you ask, you know, about, hey, did any of them have firearms or weapons or anything? And he tells you, you know, a couple of them, I saw a couple, one guy with a handgun, uh, a couple of them may have bladed weapons, but I'm not sure. So you dig deeper and try to get that information. The more information you can, information you can get, just the better your plan is going to be towards the end. Um, the third stage is where you, well, I just kind of went over the third stage. Uh, the third stage is where you, you really try to hone that down. The fourth stage is where you take all of that information that you've got and you either talk to your group, your family members, and figure out what your plan of action is. So if you're, you know, if it's just you and your family, um, say you've got like, you know, us with our two boys, three boys, I keep forgetting about the third one. Uh, I don't like him anyway. <laughs> you got the three boys and the two girls. That's not... That's not real good. I don't want to say we suck, but um, if you if you're going out against seven people, a couple of them have guns. You don't know what kind of types of weapons they have. Of course, my family may be a little bit different, but the average family, if they've got a couple weapons, that may not that may be a situation. Come back and make sure and observe the situation. Maybe have somebody go out and do a little bit of recon, figure that stuff out. If you've got like like Forrest is going to talk tomorrow, talk about tomorrow the the mag groups. Maybe you do have those guys and you have that conversation about, hey, do we do address this situation right now um, or do we hang back? What do we do about this situation? So that's the, the fourth stage is figuring out um, your possibilities. The fifth stage is actually putting that plan into action. And the reason all of this is so important is because if you just listen to Mr. Johnson in the beginning, um, you'd run over there half cocked and wouldn't know what's going on and, and what type of threat you were facing. But if you do all of this stuff, um, you have a clearer picture. And this doesn't this isn't just for large scale type situations. This is every everything we do on a daily basis. Watching the news in the morning to figure out if it's going to rain or snow in the afternoon um, is intelligence gathering and it's kind of the same process. Uh, there's a lot more that goes into this, especially uh, military guys uh, like Samuel Culper. Uh, he you know they go a lot the, the different kinds of intelligence and what they do and um, actionable intelligence and quite a bit of stuff, but I've got to move on. So, But it's just important to make sure you're getting that intelligence and making sure the people you're getting communications from are getting that, that good information as well.